Now let's head to the province of Cosenza. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Lens and Cosenza. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make a Calabrese pizza. Now, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, uh, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. You could always go over to uh, my YouTube channel, Lens on Cosenza. You could get there very quickly by going to bit.ly slash Cosenza Lens. That's bit.ly slash Cosenza Lens, or just look up Lens on Cosenza on YouTube. Nevertheless, we're going to get started. Now, I have all of my ingredients in front of me here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to oil up two bowls. I'm going to reach behind me and get a piece of paper towel and just get a little oil on there. And we're going to oil up two pans. One is my work pan here. And we've oiled up, I said pan, I mean bowl. So those of you who are not seeing this, I have two bowls. These are like two quart bowls. And one of them, the one I'm oiling up now, actually has a lid we're going to be putting on there later. I'm gonna get a little more oil in this one because this is the one that I'm oiling up now with the lid that will be handling all of our dough when that time comes. All right, we'll put this down behind me. So also, I have one packet of active dry yeast, which I'm going to open up. I have a cup with three quarters cup of kind of hot water, not super hot, but hot enough. Hot tub hot is what I call it. I'm going to put my yeast in there and I'm going to stir it up a little bit. That needs to uh, kind of get activated. The yeast needs to get activated for about five minutes. While that's taking place, I'm going to get my other ingredients together. So I have a package here of uh, extra fine Tipo Zero Zero flour. This is the flour you want to use to make pizza. So Tipo Zero Zero flour. If you could see that, this is what we want to use for our base flour. This is going to be our pizza dough. We want two healthy full cups of this to go in that first pan that we kind of just did a coating of oil. And there we go, nice and generous. So we have two cups of the Tipo Zero Zero flour in that bowl. Now, next, what I'm going to do, put this over here on the side, we need three quarter teaspoon of salt. So we get our salt out here and we're going to do three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. There's one, one quarter, two quarters, and three quarters teaspoon of regular table salt. Now, my recipe, or the recipe, calls for a teaspoonful of sugar. I do something a little different. This is my, not a trick, but I, I think it adds a little bit of uh, uh, extra flavor to the crust. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of sugar. This is my sugar, just regular granulated sugar. There we go. Uh, let's use a half a teaspoon, Joe. There we go. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of sugar. And I use a half a teaspoon of honey. So to get my sugar fix here in the in the dough that we're making, I am doing a half a teaspoon of sugar and a half a teaspoon of honey. There we go. My hands are clean and we've got our sugar fix taken care of here. Now, next, and keep in mind our yeast is still kind of brewing. Let's give it another quick stir here. 
in our hot tub, our hot tub of yeast. Next, we want to do three tablespoons of three tablespoons of olive oil. There's one, two, and three full tablespoons of olive oil. That's done and done. So, we've got our dry ingredients, our salt, our sugar. Now, we're going to be adding our yeast mix mixture into this bowl. There's our yeast. Let's give it one more stir here. Make sure all the yeast is dissolved. There we go. Now, the yeast goes in the bowl, and this is where we begin the process. Now, I have a special spoon that I use. Let me go over and get my special spoon. I'm back. This is a big, oversized tablespoon. This starts my process here of getting my dough mixed. I know a lot of people use a lot of people use a electric blender, a more or less food processing kind of mixer. But this is a old school Calabrese style. Cosentini. I know that you're looking, I've got my Sicilian t-shirt. I ran a marathon in Palermo in 1973. I do not have a t-shirt from Cosenza. I'll get one. But right now, we're making pizza. So we'll worry about t-shirts and marathons and other things later. So I've got my dough kind of mixed here. You take a look. You see it's still kind of chunky. Now we get into the fun part. We start going by hand, getting all of that, all of that flour and all of that honey and sugar and salt all mixed together in this dough, this dough ball that we're making here. And then I'm going to do something here in about a minute. I have another bag of all-purpose flour. We're going to spread that on my surface so I could really start kneading this dough out. Now here we go. Get a little healthy handful of all-purpose sugar. Spread it around. Oh, there's a little honey there. I won't hurt anything. Okay, there is our all-purpose flour and we're going to take our dough ball here, Mr. Dough Ball. We're going to plop that down on the surface. This bowl could go. Here we go. Uh, I hope you're seeing what's happening here. We are making pizza dough. And we just keep rolling this out, rolling this out. This is the fun part for me. I love doing this. I can see why people become bakers. Anyway, we're making Calabrese pizza. You just keep rolling this out. You'll get a feel for it after a while. You'll start to feel the dough. It kind of talks to you. And uh, it, it gets a consistency where it's, it's not really sticky. It, it kind of comes together where your hands could form it. Here we go. Let's keep working it, having fun with it. This is like when I was a kid, we used to have something called silly putty. Well, you couldn't eat silly putty, although we tried. Uh, now, as an adult, as a mature adult, I'm making pizza, which you could definitely eat. You'll see that later. So, we've got this dough ball here together. Yeah, looking good, man. This is looking really good. There's our dough ball. And what we're going to do now, we're going to transfer this dough ball to that other bowl that I had greased up a little bit earlier. Don't be afraid of the flour. The flour is your friend. And 
we're going to transfer this dough ball. We're going to transfer this dough ball. Look at how nice that is. I like to throw it at somebody, but I won't because I'm going to eat pizza later. Here's the bowl that we had greased up earlier. We're going to put Mr. Dough Ball into this greased up pan. There he goes. And what we're going to do now is we're going to cover it. It doesn't have to be airtight. I used to use saran wrap. I like this because it snaps right on. There we go. There we go. Mr. Tupperware. Mr. Dough Ball is inside. Now we're going to let this rest for about three hours. We're going to let it rest on the side for three hours. We're going to come back after three hours and we're going to punch it down again because it's going to rise. There'll be air pockets inside. That's why it rises. You're going to punch all of that down and then let it sit again for about another hour, maybe 90 minutes. We'll cut this dough ball in half and then we're going to make two pizzas, two calabrese pizzas tonight. We'll be back. We're Lenza and Cosenza. I'm the soon-to-be expat that is going to be, well, I don't even think I have to make pizza in, uh, in Cosenza. There's enough pizza everywhere you go, and I'm sure they're better than mine, but mine are pretty good. We'll be back. I'm back. We're back. My dough is back, and uh, we're making a calabrese pizza. So stay with me here. Uh, this is our ball of dough. You can see how it, it's risen. And we're going to plop this guy right out onto some flour. And we're going to pound this out again just a little bit before we roll it because now we're into the actual pizza making part of, of the process. And we're going to cut this up a little bit literally we're going to cut it up but we're also going to cut up the film so that i don't bore you with every little detail here as i roll out the dough still rolling out you can see this i'm going to see if we could get a little more symmetrical they always somehow look like the shape of uh, the province of cosenza and it is a Calabrian pizza, a Cosentini pizza. This is about as thin as I'm going to go. Otherwise, it'll start breaking up and we'll start creating holes. Now, what I'm going to do now is I am going to shift this over to, this is going over to a, I'm just going to show you this. I'm just going to show you this here, a little close up of what's going on. I'll come back with a close-up of the ingredients on here. So stay with me. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm loading up my guy here with tomato sauce. There we go. We could get rid of this guy. We have here, what we're doing is we're putting on our base of tomato sauce onto the crust we're going to put a layer of uh, shredded cacciacavallo cheese. This is a calabrese cheese. We have mushrooms uh, that we're going to put on here. Uh, and we have calabrese sausage. We're putting on the sausage now. I'm going to show you this in a close-up. And a um, couple more steps of salt, pepper, ground um, peppercorns, a little bit of, of extra virgin olive oil. And then we put it in the oven, which has been preheated to 475 degrees. So now we're putting on the um, cacciacavallo cheese, which has been shredded. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you what we've created here, our calabrese pizza. And uh, here we go. We're going to be putting a, a, just a wee bit more tomato sauce. Here's the thing about uh, Italian pizza. Most of it is uh, thinner. We're here in Chicago, the, the home of the deep dish. Uh, it, it's a thing, but it's not really Italian pizza. Uh, when you get into uh, the true Italian pizza, Calabrese pizza, uh, Neapolitan pizza, 
uh, they tend to be thin. Um, you might find a little thicker crust in Sicily, but not deep dish. Deep dish is a, a whole different thing, and um, it's, it's, we have to put a little olive oil on here. Oh, okay, so we're going to put this in the oven, but before we do, I want to show you what we've done here. This is a Calabrese pizza crudo. It hasn't been cooked yet, and uh, you can see it uh, looks very nice, and uh, looks like the shape of uh, the province of Cosenza. Now we go into the oven. We have a base of cornmeal here on the, uh, on the, on the uh, paddle. So here we go. Pizza number one is in the oven. Now we go to pizza number two. The reason I make pizza is this. You can't get a good pizza in Chicago. You really can't. I, I, I'm not a pizza snob either. It's just really hard to get a good pizza. Uh, it's hit or miss. Uh, you would think in the neighborhood that I live in, because it's kind of, uh, eh, I would say it's a fairly hip neighborhood. This is uh, the hipsters beeping their horns, which is a constant thing. But uh, nonetheless, it's hard to get a good pizza. Uh, the, the tomato sauce tends to be very acidic. You really get agita. It's, uh, it's a thing, man. Not with my pizza, not with my ingredients, because I am very particular. There we go, there's a nice pizza. This, someday I'll be able to spin it and throw it up in the air like a real pizzaiolo. I'm not there yet, but they taste good. So now I am putting this on the paddle again with the cornmeal. And the cornmeal, the cornmeal allows it to slide off the paddle. Let me show you that. This is cornmeal. And uh, it allows the, the dough, again, which tends to get a little sticky, slide right off of the paddle. What I didn't show is in my oven that's preheated to 475, I have two pizza stones. And those stones were in the oven as it was preheating. So those pizza stones that the pizzas are sitting on are underneath the crust, which kind of lets the heat come up and uh, it's uh, really a, a key part of making a good pizza. You need a, a pizza stone and I have two of them. I have a round one and a square one but uh, the fact that my pizzas are not symmetrical I guess that doesn't make a difference. Um, nonetheless the pizza I am doing now, the calabrese pizza I'm doing, is I'm doing a calabrese pesto sauce on this base as opposed to tomato sauce. And again, we're putting on the Cacciacavallo cheese and uh, the mushrooms. Yes, absolutely. We have uh, a, a, a nice base of mushrooms that have already been sauteed in virgin olive oil before we began the process. So we got all of our ingredients together so that we could save a little time and uh, put these in the oven. Uh, in a way that expedites the whole process. I'm really not a cook. I'm, I'm a one-trick pony. I could make a pizza and maybe a grilled cheese. But um, again, my pizza making uh, was born out of necessity because I love pizza, but you can't get a good one. Uh, once again, maybe somebody is agreeing with me here. But um, we, do, we are drizzling a little bit of tomato sauce on the pesto. And uh, again, you don't want to forget your salt and pepper. Uh, you want to put a little ground black pepper, the coarse ground black pepper, and then drizzle some extra virgin olive oil on your pizza. Not too much because if you put too much, it'll leak through and then your pizza will stick to the paddle, even though you've got the, uh, the cornmeal there, it, it will leach. So now I am ready to put this pizza into the oven I'll give you a look at this pizza. You can see here we've got the uh, the base of pesto, and then we put the cacciacavallo cheese. 
we put the mushrooms just a little bit a little bit of uh, uh, tomato sauce salt pepper drizzle the uh, olive oil and don't forget the crushed black pepper now we're going to put this in the oven here we go there's uh, my other pizza stone and let this guy slide right on that stone oh it's a beautiful thing and now the next 10 or 15 minutes we will have two pizzas we'll be back okay the moment of truth pizza number one is ready to see daylight so now we take them out and we look forward to eating here we go oh that's hot This is pizza number one. Look at that baby, bubbling and sizzling. Is that something? We're gonna put it right here on these hot pads. Look at that, wow. A few more minutes and then uh, the pesto pizza will come out. I uh, may have neglected to say that the mushrooms uh, that we used were crimini mush mushrooms for the calabrese pizza. And uh, we used uh, calabrese sausage, cavallo cheese that was shredded. Uh, all the other ingredients are pretty standard. But, uh, and there's all types of things that, that you could do to really get a true calabrese pizza. You could get, uh, if you could find it, induja. And induja is a, a spreadable, um, it's a spreadable salami. It's a little hot. Um, a lot of things in Calabria tend to be picante or hot, um, but um, we tried to keep it simple and again uh, going over what it took to put all this together. Uh, type double zero flour, you could get it at any uh, Italian deli or Italian bakery. Um, olive oil, uh, tomato sauce, uh, cheese of your choosing. We were doing a calabrese pizza, so we did cavallo cheese, which is a cheese that is um, from the region. Um, we did um, calabrese sausage. You could use any sausage. Maybe you don't like sausage. Crimini mushrooms. And again, it's very easy. It's fun. It's fun. And uh, we usually get two or three meals out of this, the two of us. Let me see. Yeah, we're just about ready for pizza number two. So this is uh, going to be the pesto pizza. And uh, again, the pesto pizza was uh, the dough and the crust that we rolled out. And then we had a base of the pesto. Then we layered it with the cavallo cheese and the mushrooms, salt, pepper, crushed, ground black pepper, spritz or sprinkle a little extra virgin olive oil. It goes into your 475 degree oven on a preheated pizza stone. That pizza stone was in your oven when you were preheating it. And it was on the wooden paddle with a nice base of um, cornmeal. The cornmeal allows it to slide and actually tastes pretty good when it gets into the, into the crust. So it lets you slide it right out onto your pizza stone. And uh, there you go. Uh, give it about eh, 12 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You'll start seeing the crust at the edges to get a little bit brown. And because it's so thin, that's where you want it. Um, you don't want to undercook it because it would be a little bit doughy. And if you overcook it, it gets a bit too crisp. It's almost cracker-like then. So you want to keep an eye on on the dough and look around the edges when you start to see here the little the little oh that's hot the brown edges that's when you want to take it out and you could see it stopped bubbling so we're about ready to take out the pesto pizza here we go and here is the pesto pizza look at that baby Ooh, is that nice again it's piping hot it's bubbling and hopefully 
you could see that I'm going to bring it over a little closer to the camera this pizza stone is uh, 475 degrees so you could imagine it's a uh, it's a hot stone there we go take a look at that guy you could see the nice green pesto sauce and it's still bubbling there you go I hope you enjoyed my my pizza making I hope you enjoy my journey into becoming a an expat um, I've got a long way to go we've got about eight months ahead of us but uh, having fun and uh, prepping myself to become uh, Italiano Proprio and thanks for joining me on Lens and Cosenza uh, for those of you who are just doing the podcast you haven't been able to see the pizzas but I hope I've been able to provide you with enough information as to what was taking place visually uh, right now I'm looking at a bright red and beige and white uh, sausage pizza and then the pesto pizza is uh, kind of the same but you've got the green highlights from the pesto sauce so for those of you who don't have uh, visuals thanks for joining you could always go check me out on uh, YouTube and that's Lens on Cosenza or shortcut bit.ly slash Cosenza Lens that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Cosenza Lens. Thanks for joining me. Give me a like, subscribe if you care to. Thanks again. Bye.